Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue with clinical reasoning, and this one we're going to talk about testing hypotheses, and we're going to talk a little bit about probability and uncertainty. Don't worry, we're not going to get into any math or any weird terms like Bayesian reasoning. We're going to just do it with looking at the weather. All right, so this is a forecast that I took from my phone, and you can tell this was not any time recently because it's not been 81 degrees for a while, but still, still it's, it's relevant, right? So if at 8 a.m., there's a 40% chance of rain. That's what this forecaster said. And if at, at 8 o'clock it does not rain, was this guy wrong? No, he wasn't, right? This is a forecast, not a prediction. If it does rain, is he wrong? No. All we know is that there's a 40% chance of rain. He cannot say with certainty that it will rain or that it will not rain. He could say 40% chance that it will rain. Now, with medicine, we have the same thing. We have the same uncertainty there. We can uh, assign probabilities to each diagnosis. So let's say that we have three diagnoses in our differential diagnosis of a guy who has a headache. And we thought some of the things that we were considering was a high blood pressure bleeding in the brain, migraines, or carbon monoxide poisoning, which can also cause a headache. And we figured, okay, well, maybe there's a 40% chance that it's bleeding in the brain and that there's a 30% chance that it's a migraine headache and maybe about 10% that it's uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. And uh, that's the probability of this patient having these. These are our estimates, much like our weather forecaster made estimates for rain. Now, one thing that you, you will look here is that we said that the forecaster can never be 100% sure that it's going to rain or not rain. Same thing with differential diagnoses. Uh, we can never be 100% sure that somebody has a diagnosis because there is so much variability. Everybody's body is different. Everyone explains their body differently. Everyone uh, reacts to things differently, and so there's no way you can be 100% sure. But you could get pretty close to there, but you can never be 100% sure. And similarly, you can never be 100% uh, sure someone doesn't have something, or in, the, in this terminology, 0% sure that they have something, uh, for the same reasons. And so now let's look at our probability distribution here of of a differential diagnosis, and let's, let's cut it into three pieces, all right? And these three pieces happen to fall into the same categories that I talked about before, the trash it, the test it, and the treat it uh, uh, categories. And so this line is called the treatment threshold, and this is the testing threshold. If you pass the testing threshold, you need to do some tests. If you pass the treatment threshold, you need to treat the diagnosis. So depending on where the probability of your, of your diagnosis falls, it depends on what you're going to do. So if it falls in this area here, you say, you know what? I'm not going to consider it any further. Again, I said you can never be 100% sure that they don't have something, but you could be sure enough. It might be, uh, let's say that a patient comes in with uh, chest pain, and uh, you say, well, I'm not 100% sure that they weren't shot in the chest, but I have no evidence saying that they, they have no bullet holes in them, and they do not say they were shot. Uh, so I'm pretty darn sure that they don't, so I'm not going to consider that any further. Similarly, on the other side of the spectrum here, you could say, I have enough data to say that someone has it. Now, I cannot be 100% sure, but I could be pretty close. So let's say you have a guy with asthma, and so he says he has asthma. He says this feels like his asthma. He is wheezing like asthma. He's not been taking any of his asthma medicines, and you're saying, you know what? That's close enough for me. I'm going to start treating. Now, what happens in this middle section here? This is our testing uh, area. If you don't have enough information to discard something, that is to rule it out, and or you don't have enough information to uh, start treating it, that is rule it in, you need more data. You need to analyze it some more. And so that's when you fall into this test tested area. And so you collect more evidence. And as you collect more evidence, it's going to help you. It's either going to push your, your, your probability up if it supports a particular diagnosis, and if it moves it up, maybe it'll move it up a little bit here, and you're still within the treatment testing area, so you need to get more data and more data until you get into the testing area, a treatment area, and then you can start treatment. Now, if you get evidence that uh, is against the, different, the diagnosis that you have, so maybe it pushes it down, and as it pushes it down, you might fall here, and you collect some more data, and then you push it here, and you say, ah, I am at the point where I no longer want to consider this. I've got enough evidence to... Um, to discard it, to rule it out. And so how do you do this? You really are going to compare this, you know, what you found on the patient, and so that's what I represented with a stethoscope here. So this really means your history, your physical exam, and all your testing results. Then you compare that to the illness scripts for that disease that you have, and you say, how much of it matches? How much of it, you know, does it match? And the more it does, the more it matches, the more likely you have evidence in support of it, and the more that you push it up.
Or you could say it doesn't match, right? Maybe what I find on my patient doesn't match. Nothing in the history and the physical and the testing matches this illness script, and so it pushes it downward. And so it pushes it below the testing threshold eventually. Now, we will eventually get into the math that, that uh, supports all of this stuff, but, but for right now, you just got to realize that the more a, a patient's presentation matches our understanding of that disease, the more evidence you have for it. And the more that our patient's presentation doesn't match our understanding of the disease, uh, that evidence pushes, pushes the probability of it down. Now, this does imply one thing. It implies that you have a pretty good uh, understanding of what that disease is. You had built a good illness script. So if your illness script is faulty, then of course, you know, this, this whole thing could be wrong. But that's uh, for another time. So you want to make sure that you collect good illness scripts. All right. And so this is it. This is our framework. We went through everything. and I'm going to kind of review it here real quickly. Uh, we have four places that we're going to collect data from. The initial data is going to come from either the chief complaint or maybe some vital signs you get or information you get from the paramedics, right? And from each one of these sources, you're going to gather data and then you're going to do some hypothesis testing. So if you get this data, you know, this one just gets handed to you. You don't have to go collect it. Then you start interpreting it and you make a differential diagnosis using one of these methods and you say, do I have enough evidence to start treating or testing anything yet? No? All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is history. I need to start asking questions. So now I start asking questions. What questions do I ask? Well, I ask things based on my differential, and i got to make sure I ask it rightly. And then when I finally get that information, I organize it. I say, do I need to add anything more to my differential diagnosis? And does anything that I have now uh, match anything on my differential can I trash anything? Can I treat anything? No, I need to collect more evidence. So you go to physical. You do the same thing again. You know which data to collect because you know what you're considering on your differential diagnosis and you want to make sure you correct it, collect it properly. You organize that data and you say, okay, cool. Do I, do I need to think of anything else now on my differential? No. All right, fine. How does that uh, information I collected match my illness scripts? Can I trash anything? Can I treat anything? Uh, nope, let's go back and get some tests, and et cetera. And you go round and round and round until you find a diagnosis that you can treat or you rule out all the diagnoses that, uh, that you can think of. And you, in this case, you say, look, I don't know what you have, but I'll tell you what you don't have. Uh, and if you don't, then you, if, you, if you still have all the things that are the testing, then you need to go gather more data. And you might have to go back to history sometimes or back to physical, back to testing in order to do that. This is it. This is our clinical reasoning. Uh, framework. There's a lot still in here that we have to unpack, but I wanted to give you an overview. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.